Good morning. My name is Heather Leeson. I'm with Open Knowledge Foundation. I'm here today with my special guest, Nika Alexavia, Alexavia from Infogram, and she's going to share some details on how to data viz and a little bit about Infogram, but she's really going to frame it in the how do you be a better storyteller, which I think is super important. And if you joined us last week, we had a conversation with School of Data with um, Hannah Williams from Code for South Africa, and she talked about data vision design. So I think both sessions will kind of complement your learning as you try and figure out how to tell your story and do your advocacy. So Nika, tell us more. Hello, everyone. I'm Nika. Thank you, Heather, for introduction. Uh, I think uh, my presentation will speak uh, louder than any intro introduction words. So let me just start here and I will also share my screen. Grand. Wow. I will take this moment to push it online so that we can get a couple more viewers. Because <laughs> I hear that's part of the storytelling technique, Nika. <laughs> Understand that you did some training in South Africa last week. True, true. And actually Hannah was one of the people who helped to facilitate it. So I, I'm, I'm really happy that the community circles are closing up and getting more consent. It's, it's really nice. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so Heather, is my presentation live now? Yes, you're all set. Great. So hello guys again for those who just joined now. Uh, I'm Nika and I'm from Infogram. And today I'm going to share some essentials of uh, data visualization, which will help to make your data-driven stories uh, viral online. But let's start with the, actually the, the, the core of the whole story about data visualization, human brain, the way it perceives things. Uh, well, history tells that it's very good at perceiving stories, and when it comes to data, well, stories usually are stronger than, than the spreadsheets full of digits. But we can't really um, skip data because we need to measure things and data-driven arguments are, will tell us more about what's going on in the world. So here's an example of um, plain text data uh, put. Uh, and the story goes uh, about how many people live in New York City and uh, what kind of um, ethnical minorities they represent. So if you try to get the idea which is the majority from those minorities, perhaps it's not that easy, but when you do a simple graphic, simple bar chart, it's apparent uh, that the Spanish minority is the, is the major in New York City at that time. And that's because graphs have this magical power to reveal all the story uh, at one glance, in one flash. Um, and uh, we can tell that uh, visualized data is as powerful as stories. Uh, the big question is how can we uh, produce data visualization ourselves? And currently the digital world have evolved very rapidly recently and there are various ways you can do a really engaging data visualizations. Uh, you can do it manually if you know design basics and have some coding skills. A um, lot of media organizations, well, big media organizations like New York Times, La Nation, Guardian, have their own data departments. When they have data journalists, designers, coders, they spend months uh, and thousands to produce really great um, data visualization projects and share them on, on big events like Malofe uh, in, in Spain and um, uh, Global Editors Network, Data Journalism Awards. Um, so th that, that's, that's really kind of the high end of data visualization, uh, online data visualization landscape. Uh, for daily use, uh, people who have coding skills and have some friends who are designers or do design themselves use semi-automated libraries. But for uh, those who don't have those skills now, a very good entry point is, uh, automated, is the use of automated data visualizations, data visualization tools, and here you see some of them. And Infogram um, is certainly 
one of the tools you can use uh, if you don't know how to code or um, uh, what the basics of design. So let me guide you through. Uh, Infogram is quite simple. You see that the screen is very intuitive uh, and at the home screen we have only three buttons. The first one is uh, for infographic creation. Second one to access your uh, past projects. And the third button is to discover more uh, features uh, you can enable by painting. But let's try to create a simple infographic. So I have my pro account activated. So I have those uh, pro uh, themes. I will use one of the free versions here. And you see that everything happens here with double clicking. Awesome story, let it be. And the same for charts. You double click and you see spreadsheet with dummy data. You can also upload data from uh, Excel or CSV file or with pro version you can also uh, connect your Google spreadsheet or JSON feed. Um, you can uh, move objects around, uh, delete them, add new ones from, from uh, the right screen side and you see that there are more than 30 different data visualization formats available to you. So you choose one, again double click, you see that uh, the backend dummy data changes and it tells you what's the data for, for what date format is infogram friendly. You can also do some adjustments like change colors, icons, and um, well, basically be creative about the way you tell your story. Once you're done, you, with free version, you could share, share it online very easily. Either use one of the social networks, uh, publish it on Infogram, or embed into your blog or, or, or media outlet. You can also publish it here. So uh, you see that in, well, I doubt that it was minute. Uh, we will create a quite basic visualization using Infogram free version and um, we have the full ability to share it online. Coming back, um, so uh, it, it, currently there are more than 1.2 million people using Infogram and we are really happy about it. That's the best um, measure, well, the, the best metric uh, we are proud of. And uh, those people come from education from uh, foreign non-profit businesses. Uh, they are journalists and activists. And uh, the reason why they use Infogram, I think that's the kind of the main reason, is that it's fast, easy, and also well, beautiful. Um, so here are some media examples, like Al Jazeera, uh, Wall Street Journal, and you see that it's very simple uh, visualization showing what was the real cost of uh, iPhone 5S and 5C, not uh, iPhone 6 yet. Uh, and, and it's really straightforward. It was one of the most shared infographics on Infogram. Uh, also international organizations like Amnesty International, Oxfam about rape cases in India. As for education, very common use case is that teacher assigns pupils to tell how the electricity works or what's the historical event, how, how, how was it. So it's, instead of writing essay, you create data-driven story and learn by doing. Uh, also, we have some additional offers for brands. I have a question, have a question yeah. about the education piece. So uh, that picture has a bunch of kids learning how to use Infogram. And so, um, and you said that they're teaching them teaching them about um, storytelling and electricity data. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, electricity was one of the examples. I've seen it in Las Latvian particularly, uh, but um, that's the picture taken by one of Infogram ambassadors, and I will tell about ambassador program later, uh, Elizabeth Kahn uh, from one of American universities. Um, they, they have um, um, approach to teach pupils uh, different uh, innovations 
and uh, yeah, they, they use a lot of topics to story tell, um, and um, yeah, the main advantage that pupils learn by doing. I think that's super important. You know, my work in School of Data is about creating creating the next generation of teachers, right? People who can teach data. But I think what 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 really strikes me about this is that there are students learning data items, and they're learning how to story tell, and they're learning it with a tool. So the tool becomes their um, ambassador, if you will, to learn. So it's it's kind of a exciting way for me to think about the fact that you know if we can teach people how to use data as part of their storytelling and make it um, make it more valuable and put the story far more important and the analysis far more important if a tool can enable that at a, at a children's level or at a different language level I think that's super great anyway I just, I just I was so curious about like how people learn how they integrate this into the learning curriculum Thank you. Definitely. Uh, we also heard the stories that in very early grades, uh, teachers show what's the difference between number two and number five, showing it into visualization. So if you, you can use up apples, showing the amount, or you can use digital tools to teach the same, the same thing. That's, that's great indeed. That is. Yeah, so uh, my next point about brands, just really briefly, uh, we are creating custom designs and uh, they, they can remove Infogram logo, like you see Aftonbladet, one of the major Swedish um, media outlets, uh, just removed the Infogram logo, created their own look and feel, and used Infogram. Here's an example of The Verge. Uh, but enough with that. Um, in a whole, there are more than 2.7 million infographics created, which is a lot. If you think about the amount of infographics created before Infogram was launched or before automated data visualization uh, well, was emerged, uh, it's it's more well, a couple of times more than than in whole human hi history before. But what this number tells us, actually 99% of those about 3 million infographics never become popular. And um, one of the reasons is because um, it's to, the tool is really easy and it's really tempting to play around and a lot of people forget about the story behind it. What's the main thing I want to tell? They become too tool driven and not the idea driven. So my goal today is to tell you how you can become this 1% using other infogram or other automated uh, data visualization tool and uh, really communicate your um, initial message. So uh, it's a part of our data club initiative and we organize not only webinars but also workshops. Uh, Hannah, um, is one of our Infogram ambassadors and uh, as I discovered she uh, did the last uh, skills sharing session so Infogram ambassadors also do workshops for their local communities and we are happy to share share our vision and um, about where was data visualization automate what's the future of automated data visualization in various events so uh, that's because we um, see ourselves uh, implementing um, the social mission of spreading data literacy uh, because we have this ability to reach wide communities, empower them with the tool, but we also want them to become data literate and um, able to read and communicate data. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, Heather also joined uh, our ambassador program and now we have more and more people engaging in, in this mission to spread data literacy. Uh, I have to say, that, um, yeah. what I would say, Nika, is that, you know, I'm one of those people who created one of those 99 examples, 99% examples, because I tinker, right? I want to know, and that's how you learn, right? So much like I learned at Ushahidi, there's a lot of maps that were created, and it's because people were trying to figure out how to add that into their workflow or whatever existing project they had. But I think that it's also about, you know, the more that you learn how to use a tool. So I tinkered quite a bit, and then I actually used it as a project at OKF. 
because we wanted to do some community survey stuff, which is going to be published shortly. Um, and so I was able to like do something really fast and make it really sensible and make a message internally using the tool. And so that's why I think it's useful. So I think it's important for people to kind of figure out and tinker. Yeah, uh, it's hard to disagree. Of course, you have to play around with tool, get familiar, get inspired by, by or the dummy examples or other examples uh, on Infogram and go forward. And the way you can go forward is um, by, well, actually, story tell, by, by storytelling. Um, so let me share some, some, essential, some basic essentials of data storytelling. And if we uh, are summarizing it, then the process goes from data to story. And uh, if we start with data, there are three uh, core things we can look into. Uh, when we start to discover, when we start to, well, for instance, we're working on Excel sheet and we are just creating those draft charts, we can look for trends, for contrast, or for outliers. And that's the kind of the f first point where the story can, can emerge. If we move forward, uh, to point a message, it actually goes very, very together. And the first thing is uh, to answer the question of relevance. For whom is it relevant? Why a person should know this, um, discover this data? And uh, also, who is this person? Like, if it's, um, perhaps it's an um, old woman, uh, perhaps it's, it's a teenager, an approach will be completely different. And um, if the story wouldn't be about the here specifically, well, as much specifically you can get, um, then he or she won't listen. So uh, two things. What are you saying and who would care about it? And once you have those two elements uh, and, com and combine them together, the answer is somewhere in between. And that's the core idea of your story. Uh, and the best thing is to put this idea into one sentence, one tweet, and uh, use it as a, as a spine for all your story. And uh, there are three, three um, relevant, well, ways of relevance you can, um, you can trigger. First of all, uh, you can approach rational relevance. And let's take an example of polluted river in a neighborhood. So uh, what's the pollution? Uh, like uh, how it affects us? And then we touch emotional relevance. Uh, what do you, how do I feel about that my river is polluted? Uh, my family is drinking polluted water. My neighbors are drinking it. And then the matter becomes social. So should others know about, about it? Should I share the story and um, should I share, share the word to society and need to know it? And once I show those uh, three relevances, the story has a really big potential to become viral. The last point is about the story and the way we story tell it. And uh, the main question is what makes a, a story great? And first of all, what doesn't make it? And we call it the curse of knowledge. Uh, the example of Higgs boson, one of the greatest discoveries of, uh, recent, um, of, of recent years, um, very important. The way it was storytelled was using a lot of graphs, which not that visualized data, it felt, felt more, but scientists were to specific. They want to tell everything they know about Higgs boson. Um, they want to share everything. And journalists and other, other people who want to spread the word about this great discovery were just confused. And uh, that's because when you know something, it's, it, it's hard to remember how was it when you didn't know anything about the thing. So try to put yourself in the shoes of listener. Uh, be um, well, just, just open your empathy and uh, try to feed um, only the most necessary information you have. And that's actually the first point of the checklist uh, we usually use 
simplicity. And this checklist is created by Brothers Heats, who, who wrote a book made to stick. And you can use this check checklist to create simple, unexpected, concrete, credentialed, emotional story. And let me go deeper in each of those elements. So simplicity. Um, as I mentioned, it, it's really easy to get from information to confusion. And be really careful about the sweet point, uh, not to cross it, because then people will be just too confused and won't risk to share the story online. One, th one thing that I'd yes. add here, Nika, is that um, I learned this from a colleague when I was at Ushahidi, and he said, what does the data not say? Make sure that you make that, that as part of your message. Right, so but by sim, you know, even if you have no conclusion, that's still important as a simple message is that the data did not capture this, and that that kind of helps in terms of storytelling as well. True, true. You just have to know what's your uh, core message, and if you good, if you have it in a way of conclusion. But I agree that sometimes reporting is also really relevant. Uh, here's an example, an infogram of quite simple chart which is quite powerful at the same time because it shows the amount of fresh water which is the only drinkable water we have on planet and very simple um, chart only two two variables compared and the message is quite straightforward the opposite would be long long bar chart where person tried to tell how many tweets each uh, of of um, those, I, I think it was about politicians, each of those the politicians uh, got, and uh, the reason it, it's, it's, it's not organized, it's, it's messy, and sometimes you don't need to tell everything you know about the story, remember the story about Higgs boson, it was just too confusing, perhaps for your audience only four or five uh, people uh, and, and their Twitter results are relevant. So simplicity. My next point is unexpectedness. And it's not too easy to achieve uh, if you are doing data-driven stories all the time, but try to find something not only newsworthy, but something which also uh, challenges the current beliefs. And here's one example of um, on Infogram, the story is about literacy, which is perceived as a quite soft topic, but the first point the story teller makes is about the cost of illiteracy. So, wow, we are actually paying for people who don't know how to read, how to write, we have to integrate them into society, and uh, it actually costs us money, so we should increase the level of literacy. The opposite would be just um, uh, quite good infographic, but the title of it is too straightforward. It doesn't create any any um, trigger. Um, it, it just um, tells what what's quite obvious, well, or not really unexpected that Facebook dominates social networking, and. I think we can uh, I think what we can learn is a lot from our journalist friends, right? Like, what is a headline and what, like, not to be clickbaity or, or, or whatever, or buzzfeedy, but, um, you know, like, what is a headline and why does a headline um, engage somebody? So if it asks a question or if it, it it makes a statement or something that's curious, if it's common words, then it's not, It's it just gets lost in the mess of everything that's done. So I think like writing a, a strong headline I think is, and there's a great article by Copy Blogger on what does it mean to write a good headline. I'll paste it into the Google Plus so that people can see that, but please go ahead. Yes, yes, you're completely right. Headline is one of the core things for uh, in Infogram as well. It also um, leaves infographic when it's embedded somewhere, therefore you, you can uh, attract it goes to your infographic to cover other infographics of yours, and if the title is not engaging, the person will, just won't click. My next point is concreteness, and that's the only way you can make sure that people will understand precisely what you mean. And here's one quite concrete um, example uh, of, of uh, the hiring process. 
that there were two, only one actually got hired. And infographic shows all, all the stages the person had to go through in order to get hired. So it's quite straight visual metaphor. The opposite would be um, this chart, which is quite confusing because it's actually a bar chart. And it's a story about um, the right, uh, the, the, the selection of right chart format. And in this case, uh, this bar just, the, the value made the circle close, therefore it just confuses the person. It looks funky, but at the same time, it, it makes an impression that uh, the, the gray value is, is the biggest, even though it's not. Uh, my next point is credibility. And of course, you have to always source your data. It's one of the core things to drive your credibility. But also, don't be afraid to quote uh, opinion leaders. And here is an example of uh, one NGO who promoted the idea of uh, safe gas usage. And they used a quote from Albert Einstein, to, which just embeds all, all the idea they want to communicate. Um, other well, bad example is this infographic, which have potential to be quite interesting, but it doesn't source anything. I don't know the source of the data or, um, or why it's relevant for me. Nothing, nothing actually leads me there. Also, if I can find my inner Hannah, based on what I learned from her last week, visually not fun to look at. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's visually unbalanced. True, true. The right way, um, the right data visualization format is quite, quite essential in doing data driven story. True. My last point is uh, emotional element in your story. And I think it's um, not, well, it's one of the hardest uh, since data tends to be uh, quite, quite cold and emotional, but actually it, it hides uh, quite big drama in it. And you can try to trigger other sadness, anger, surprise, fear, or joy. And here's an example of, um, of um, visual, uh, visually, emotional story, which is not exactly a data-driven approach, but it still, it still makes a point about the drama uh, in, in the story. And infographic is, um, is a format uh, where you can combine information with uh, data visualization. So uh, you can be playful with other, other means, other visual means, and uh, still create this emotional um, appeal or, or, or ju just trigger some of the core emotions. Opposite would be just a report, which I put here just because it's not emotional, it's rational. So um, just summarizing everything, simple, unexpected, concrete, credentialed, emotional story could potentially make your infographic viral. So at this point, we would like to move to the tool, but let me quickly go through some of the um, tips for, for the best uh, database format selection. And the bar chart is usually the best choice if you want to compare. And if the values doesn't end up more than, uh, or well, they add up less than 100%. As for line chart, it's, really great to show the tendency and tendency in time. It has potential to become confusing if the data is not time-based. Area is both showing the tendency and comparison in time. Map is good to compare countries among them, and currently Infogram have quite, has quite um, basic maps. You can just com compare countries. But we are looking into integrations with other mapping engines, so you have really detailed maps up to street or house level. 
pie chart uh, is also a good way to compare uh, the, the ratio, the uh, proportions between elements you compare, but not if the values are too similar, or you have and you have a lot of values. You have potential to create a wheel of fortune then. And uh, last suggestion about the pictorial chart, which is quite widely used, especially if you have uh, some, uh, some, some story which uh, related with people or amount of some, some commodities. And uh, the pictorial chart works well if you compare uh, two or three groups. If it's more, it has potential to become too messy and, and, and complex for people. Um, that's all. Um, I'm happy to hear your questions. Uh, other Heather can moderate them or just shoot them right away if you have this te technical ability. And um, I wish you data-driven time. <laughs> so I have some questions. The, I've asked online if there's any questions or comments or tips that people have about data visualization in general because I think that, um, you know, while you're talking about Infogram, you're also giving the gift of how to talk about storytelling and you're also giving the gift of like maybe some tools are right for different things and I think that, that I'd really like for you to kind of go over that a little bit closer because I think that um, in your last few slides you kind of really stated that not every not every technique is good for um, each type. So maybe you can give some examples of when when a tool is not okay to use. So for example, I've seen some bar graphs and I'm like, oh, I'm not quite sure that was the right way to kind of just demonstrate that. So maybe if you could provide some more examples around the last few ones that you provided, that would be great. Um, you mean like practical examples or yeah, um, practically, like at the last part you went through, you know, this is this is um, this is when maps are good to use. This is when charts are good to use. And I think that I think that just some practical examples around that would be super interesting. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't prepared them, uh, but um, okay. I, I just wanted to touch about the tool approach. Uh, if you if you map infogram uh, in the landscape of all the automated database tools, uh, the best use case for infogram if uh, is when you are hit by numbers. So you have uh, other reports or uh, some spreadsheet data you are already familiar with. And the only thing you need is visualization. So you just open the infogram, throw the data in, and export. Of course, you need to know the story behind it, but it, it's like really convenient way to do it. Uh, as for others, um, infogram is not the best tool for maps, as I mentioned, and also for um, for mind maps, where you have to show relationships between objects, and you actually have to draw. Um, some, some some things. So we are uh, creating um, third-party integrations, so you're able to do it on Infogram as well, but currently there are other tools who do it better. Right. Coming back uh, to the um, initial question of Heather, uh, yeah, it's hard because I don't have visual examples prepared. But uh, if you have a bar chart, it's really confusing. Uh, like if you, um, like like in in this example here, when you haven't organized it, and the values are too different. Uh, for instance, if we would have five million instead of uh, five thousands, then it would be just very long bar and other um, other uh, variables would just disappear. So it's also about the nature uh, of, of your data. Um, as for line chart, um, I had this very great example when you basically could end, can end up with a square um, just because your data is not organized. Um, you can also uh, fuck up things with area um, as well. And um, oh, um, we also have those, we call it spaceship charts. When people are um, using um, the hierarchy, uh, let me go to infogram. And um, 
And if you add um, this hierarchy chart, pyramid, and uh, you see that values are well, quite similar. They will not, not similar, but they don't have this big gap. But if you add one more zero here, and you see, you kind of have this spaceship spaceship thing. So, so the other, um, other thing to, to get aware of, uh, and the good thing about Infogram is that you can play with your data uh, and visualization instantly. So you see how it will look uh, and how your changes in data affects the final visualization. Should I give I some more examples? So what I found, Mika, was that um, like when I was trying to figure out how to visualize survey data, like I really did go through all the different examples, and I was trying to teach myself the tool, but I was also like, what's the best way to tell this story in a way that makes sense, that 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 I can actually embed somewhere, right? And so the, that that was important for me, and and as much as the infographics with the large kind of different sections sometimes is useful, um, I think that. Um, the curation of an infographic is so important to do it well that you could you could um, you could bury the data or it could potentially make your story less valuable by misusing different tools. So that that was my point about the examples, um, and I really I really appreciate that you know I kind of left you on the spot there, but I think you answered that fantastically. Like just kind of trying to explain the thought process between how do you tell your story and which tool you do. I think you you explained that super well. Um, I had another question for you. Um, so you you've had 1.2 million um, you know users and all these different infograms. What are the top questions that you guys get that might help new users as they're as they're going forward and trying to make their stories? Some of the top questions sure. you think sure. that people really need to know to be able to do it. I have to say that it, my ramp up was a, like even though I've been a tinker and I'm a mapper and I played with data for quite a while. Um, it took me a while to kind of get my get my feel, and I think that was super fun to learn. It was fun to play with the colors and everything, just to try and figure out how to tell a story. So I appreciated that. But please go ahead. Yeah. Well, one of the common questions we usually get is how can I change fonts and colors and customize my infogram? And uh, the answer currently is that you can't really, because the initial um, initial idea of infogram is that you can create uh, professional looking infographics without design skills so everything is set for you not to screw up but uh, we are uh, looking in a way you can customize your infographics in the future so uh, we are uh, discovering how we can um, uh, build the tool so you can still have a beautiful result um, not having uh, those yes okay so we cut out just very briefly Nika but please go ahead we, you're, back, you're back yeah okay uh, other question we have is about how to um, import or export data and uh, how can I save my infographic and infographic For every dummy infographic you create, they are on your library, and if you want to save them offline, you just download it. Yeah, well, you have to upgrade and be become a pro user to download and kind of store them uh, on your computer, not on our server, uh, but, but they're, they're still an option. Let me think about other common questions. Oh, also about embedding and um, it's available with free version as well and then we have of course a lot of uh, business driven questions like yeah how can I remove infogram logo how can I get rid of those uh, sharing icons I need it just for my internal reporting and it's just to just to um, colorful for our hmm, for our uh, corporate um, um, conventional corporate culture, um, like that kind of questions. Otherwise, Infogram is quite simple. It's not that um, 
it's a bit different from other softwares like um, Adobe Illustrator or Tableau or, or others who were there before uh, and sometimes people got confused there are only three buttons to start with but uh, once you start to play around it's really easy to find everything you need to produce um, infographic. So I have another question for you. Um, this comes from one of my colleagues, um, and it kind of ties into what you said. You know, is that when does infogra infogram the white tool use, and what is the comparison with other tools? So in the world where we have a great number of web tools based on visualization services and tools, Google Fusion Tables, Data Wrapper, Tableau, um, what are kind of the top things that make uh, infogram unique? And so I think I can answer this, but go ahead. <laughs> Let's see if you can answer it, because frankly, you're my guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, perhaps I should um, just switch to this slide. Um, it's one of the most intuitive tools out there from my experience, and I hear it from a lot of people uh, I, I kind of, who are Infogram users and who I meet in person. Uh, there are a lot of ambassadors who are working in, with people who have no idea of what data journalism is, uh, or um, journalists who are afraid of math, maths and um, that kind of things. And Infogram is a really good way to show that it's possible even with your um, skills and level of expertise in data visualization. So uh, it's really a good tool to get inspired. And then you can move to more um, complex, um, complex tools like uh, Tableau is also, it has more uh, options to visualize your data and create it like, um, will visualize more complex things. Then you can move to semi-automated um, libraries where you can get uh, code and just um, plug it with your data visualization or you can go farther, uh, learn all the coding uh, or or and learn design and visual will become visually literate and create date, great uh, visualizations yourself. So I think the main advantage of Infogram is that um, it, it gives you uh, the minimum viable things to produce infographic um, if you don't have much time to do it, if you don't have time to learn the tool itself, or if you want to get inspired um, and just create uh, some, well, your first data visualization. So what I think, um, the way I kind of frame it is, is that it's a gateway for new folks to be able to learn how to play with their data and visualize it without the heavy lifting of design skills, so you've said that. But I think it's also about that on-ramp, right? I think, you know, one, knowing that you can play with the data and you can visualize it different, you can make it tell the story or you wanted to tell or not tell and understand that there's some real power and abuse of it in, in that because you can misuse data, right? Uh, but I think there's, it's like an on-ramp, right? So if this is a gateway and this is like an easy tool for people to use, I think of Tableau and Fusion Tables. I find Fusion Tables really hard to use. And I, I'm probably going to get in trouble for my friends from Google and other people, but, you know, I find Fusion Tables hard to use, right? And I only have a certain period of time to do things, but my colleagues who are really good and have some code skills, by all means, and you know, my colleague at Ushihidi, she created this most beautiful infogram. I absolutely love this. I can share the link with you later. Um, but just beautiful infogram, but I don't have those design chops, right? And so I think that's where the barrier comes, is that if you don't have the design chops, if you don't have the code chops, but you want to get started somewhere, I think this is kind of like your graduated learning level. Yeah, completely agree. All right. Well, I really, like, Nika, I, I don't think there's any more questions. I'm going to just check here on Google and see if there's any others. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, like, you, you've told us a little bit about your tool, a little bit about storytelling, a little bit, you kind of hit some of the high points of, of some of the complex reasons behind decision making when you're trying to choose a data tool or data, data method. I think that's super important and very giving. Is there any other closing things that you'd like to mention today? I just want um, to just uh, mention again uh, our ambassador network. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and you can you can check it out on our infogram.org page. I'm sorry I don't have the, the right logo up there. Uh, it's basically infogram with, without dot in between, uh, and then there's dot org. And uh, let me let me just show what you can get there. Pictures. Have it open, okay. <laughs> Now we get to learn about your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, so it's infogram.org, and here you get uh, can get inspired uh, about what other people do with infogram. And as I mentioned, Hana and other infogram ambassadors, Sia Bonga, they organized infogram data storytelling event. Basically, they uh, shared um, the same. Um, the same content I've shared with you, and then they had uh, uh, two hours uh, to produce infogram uh, in, in groups of three, and here are some of the outcomes. Like, people were uh, telling a story about how um, safe or well, actually unsafe are streets in Cape Town, with conclusions that in most dangerous uh, neighborhoods there are 80 uh, murders on uh, 100,000 people per year. Wow. Um, here's also a comparison of your level of education and income level, which cl clearly shows the more educated you are, the more you'll get. Um, another, I, I really like this one, <laughs> perhaps I should be more neutral, but I really like <laughs> this one because it has really a great um, straightforward wow. message that uh, this neighborhood is, well, they were... Um, there were as many violent crimes as on the other um, neighborhoods combined, which is like very strong message. I really like this one. Uh, also, uh, relationships between like poverty and sanitation here, like what kind of toilet do you have and how it affects uh, your income level. Mm -hmm. um, also, how dangerous are the streets, and since I'm uh, Having journalism background, I'm, I'm really happy about this infographic. Um, uh, nominating journalists killed uh, this year and Syria as the most mm. deadliest country for journalists and actually the, the local journalists. So um, these were just uh, two or three hours um, where people really, well, some of them just for the first time got into infogram and in, into the data they have to work with and they produced I think quite quite great um, data visualizations so I really encourage you to join our ambassador network and here you can uh, just access the application form and read a bit more about it and uh, to join the movement of well, our data club movement and uh, participate and organize one of those workshops yourself. Fantastic. So Nika, I just want to say thanks again for sharing so much knowledge and resources and information and um, also for sharing the examples from South Africa. It's really exciting to see a little bit more about how people can like learn about open data or data sets but learn it in a way that makes it accessible for them and for other people. So thank you again for that gift. Um, so infogram, um, I'll post I'll post this blog post um, with the video in so that everyone can see, and maybe perhaps with Nika's slides, um, if 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 that is possible. And we, we will make sure that um, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to contact Nika um, and our friends at Infogram. And thanks again, Nika, for sharing such great uh, great detail today. I, I learned I learned. I mean, this is my second time getting this sim this 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 talk, but this is. This I still learned quite a bit today, so thank you. Thank you, Heather. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.